I am up early. It is 6.59 a.m. to be exact, and I am going to clinical. You all know that I am a nurse practitioner school. I attend Bowie State University here in Maryland, so shout out to Bowie State, Bowie State Bulldogs. And I live in Baltimore, but my clinical site this semester for women's health and pediatrics is in Hyattsville, Maryland. So you guys know, if you're familiar with the DMV area, that is a hike. I thought I was going to be at a clinic here in Baltimore. I think I said that on the previous vlog. However, they had to make changes because the provider in Baltimore has other students and was unable to accommodate me. So the only other option was for me to go to Hyattsville. <sighs> I'm dreading the drive because y'all know the DMV traffic. The DMV traffic is atrocious going and coming. But I will make the most out of it. The site that I'm going to, it's an urgent care center that sees a variety of uh, patients through the lifespan. So from infant until elderly. So hopefully we get some women's health issues and pediatric issues in that center for my hours i have to get a total of 109 no 180 180 hours in 12 weeks and i'm just starting this week and i don't even know if these hours today will count because it'll just be orientation hours i don't think i'll be seeing patients so i'll start seeing patients next week and the urgent care center that i'm going to is owned by a nurse practitioner now i know some of y'all in the comments are going to be like how can a nurse practitioner own an urgent care center? You know, some people will think that, oh, shouldn't it be a doctor? No, she is the owner and the medical director of her own urgent care center. But anyway, she owns her own urgent care clinic. And uh, the reason for that is because Maryland is a full authority practice state. So nurse practitioners in the state of Maryland have full authority and they can see patients independently without the supervision of a physician. Now, whether you agree or disagree, that is a whole conversation for another time. But let me get going, guys. I Okay guys, I just got here and I'm gonna go in right now. It is 9.01 a.m. I can't take you all with me because I'm vlogging on my camera because I just wanna have better quality um, videos and the phone wasn't really doing it for me anymore. So let's go in here and see what today brings. I can only stay here until no later than 2 p.m., maybe one o'clock because I have to work tonight. I'll tell you guys about that later. back home the traffic was atrocious I don't know what is going on on the 95 and then I got off and got on the 695 because in Maryland there's a toll that if you don't have an easy pass um what's the name of the thing I forget the name of the, the transponder if you don't have one it's six dollars six dollars to go six dollars to come back and I'm like I'm not paying twelve dollars a day because I don't have a trans transponder and if you do it's three dollars one way three dollars the other way that's six dollars a day that's out of control so I took another route and that took a little while but I'm home now it is 1 40 I'm gonna grab something to eat and then go take a three-hour nap because you heard me correctly I will be working night shift tonight the reason for that is I think I mentioned it now I don't think I told you guys but I no matter where I'm working I always like to keep one foot at the bedside and I have been in the float pool at a local hospital for some time now However, I guess the float pool is not effective and staffing still continues to be poor. So let me tell y'all what they did. Hold on. They converted the float pool to either a full-time or a part-time option. No more, <laughs> the float pool is no longer the option where you can pick up, I think, five shifts in a six week week period or four shifts or six shifts in a whatever week period they were like no y'all not coming to work we gonna make y'all come to work we turning this into full-time and part-time and then they increased the price to seven they increased they added an additional seven dollars 
onto the rate that we were getting paid. So they were like, all right, we're giving y'all more money. You're eligible for full-time or part-time benefits. Y'all gonna come to work. So because I'm still in the flow pool, they reached out to me and they were like, hey, you have not been keeping up with your commitment. The flow pool is no longer where you can just choose shifts at your leisure. I mean, we can still pick up our own shifts, but you have to choose a commitment. You're either gonna be full-time or part-time. So I told them I'll do part-time, but it, this is not gonna be sustainable. Because you all know I work three days a week at the mental health facility. And then I go to school one evening a week. I still have schoolwork to do. I have clinical hours to obtain. Where do I have time for them to fit y'all in? Because I like having a PRN job and I need the extra cash. But I pay my nurse practitioner school tuition cash. Like I had did not take out a loan for that because I don't want any more school loans. I don't have... My school loans, it's not crazy, but I don't want to add to it, so I pay for it cash. So working the extra money helped me out a lot, but now that they made it part-time, I don't know what a girl's going to do. Let me put y'all on to this amazing drink. It is Bruce Cost Ginger Ale, and this is a turmeric passion fruit flavor. It is so delicious. I think this is made, not I think, it's made in New York, in Brooklyn, New York to be exact, so if ever... You come across this. I bought it at Mom's Organics. It is God, I came on here and I didn't even tell you guys about the clinic, about the urgent care. So I got there and there were two other students, a physician's assistant student and another nurse practitioner student. It is not uncommon for there to be, sorry. It is not uncommon for a rotation site to have multiple students. The nurse practitioner who owns the practice eventually came. A very, very, very nice lady. Very smart, bright. I didn't really see patients independently. I just kind of followed them around just to kind of get the flow and see how they do things. My only concern is that this is my woman's health pediatric rotation. And a lot of the women that were coming in, a lot of them were elderly. And there were quite a bit of men. So I'm like, how am I going to like gain the experience with caring for that population. But we'll see, we'll work it out. Y'all can see it's official. It is official. I am in my sleepwear. I know a lot of y'all are familiar with my robe. I'm about to take these contacts out. I don't even have the strength to wash this makeup off, but My room does not have darkening blinds, but I am like, I don't know. I'm like a bear that's hibernating. I can sleep with no problems in the light. I'll see you guys in a little bit. What's up, y'all? It's 5.45. I slept for three hours. I told y'all I don't have any problems sleeping. So I am dressed wearing the same scrubs. I'm not wearing any makeup. I just put on a little bit of lipstick to feel alive. I am going to grab my bag, grab my computer, and go. Good morning. It is Saturday, 7.25 a.m. to be exact. You know we're supposed to stay until 7.30, but I was like, listen, I already gave a report on these three patients. Let me get my things and go. I was given a report with my bag on my shoulder. That's how ready I was to go. Night shift, I will say, is definitely a lot comma than day shift it's been a while since i've done a night shift but the one thing is that people don't sleep like there's a lot of patients who are not asleep they're up they're calling they're requesting like graham crackers they want hot chocolate so it's like aren't you guys gonna go to bed but it's still the pace is still a lot slower than working on day shift the hardest part about being a night shift nurse is staying awake and how i manage to stay awake I got sleepy like around 1.30, 2, 2 a.m. Then I made my matcha, the powdered matcha, put a teaspoon in a cup of hot water, and it was smooth sailing after that. I even helped my coworker draw her labs because I didn't have any labs. So I'm like, girl, let me help you out because her group was busier than mine, and I am out. Thank you, God, for helping me make it, making it through this shift.
Good morning, it is Monday, and I know you guys are probably wondering, how do we go from Saturday morning with you sitting in the car to Monday morning with you getting ready to go to work? What happened to Saturday evening and Sunday? Let me tell you guys this. You don't ever have to worry about me working another night shift as long as I live. You don't have to worry about me. If I have to work night shift, I'd rather quit nursing, go find me a job at Target, I will go work at Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts. I am never picking up on another night shift again. When you guys saw me Saturday morning, I left work. I got home like around, I want to say like 8.15, right? Okay, cool. I made some tea. I sat up until about 8.45, took a shower, and then I went to bed. I woke up that afternoon, like around 1.30, with the only headache. My head was like, first of all, we don't typically do night shift. I don't know why you did this. I felt so bad. I was so nauseated. I spent the entire Saturday in the bed. I took Excedrin. I was drinking ginger tea. None of it was helping. I had a really terrible headache. Then Saturday night, headache still continued. I was drinking water. I woke up Sunday morning. The only thing I managed to do Sunday morning was I did make it to the farmer's market. I basically had to push myself and I made it to the grocery store because I know that it is the beginning of the week and I had to get all of my things prepared and get, you know, food for my children and myself prepared. But for the rest of the day Sunday, I was in the bed. Later on in the evening, I was suffering from a real bad case of mother's guilt because I spent the entire weekend not doing anything with the kids. I'm saying that like I have like multiple children and small children. My daughters are 20 and 12. So I decided to take them downtown Baltimore and we went for a stroll. By that time, my headache had kind of eased, but I was still feeling a little bit of the remnants. Do you know that dull headache feeling that you have? Hold on for a second. Yeah, I was still having very much that dull headache feeling. This doesn't even look like I put anything on. I'm using this, it's called, a, it's a skin tint, glowish from Huda Beauty, and it's in the color 11, which is deep. Doesn't even look like I have anything on. But yeah, I took the girls walking, you know, just to spend time with them. We do a lot of walking when we spend time together. Came home from that, and right back in the bed, I felt awful. Night shift might be quieter. You don't have the doctors putting in a bunch of orders. You don't have food. You don't have to worry about therapy. You're basically just giving your meds and keeping the patients tucked in and keeping them alive until morning shift comes back. So for some people, nights is a great way to get work done. A lot of people don't like the busyness of day shift, but after the way that I felt this weekend, Give me the busyness of day shift anyway, any day. I will gladly take it on. Night shift, they usually don't get the patients up out of bed in the chair. They don't have to feed. Give meds, keep the patient clean, keep them tucked in, and give a report the next morning and go. Of course, unless there's an emergency, right? I can't do it. It's not for me. My body is like, girl, you are not young. You're not in your 20s anymore where you could have like worked day shift for a couple of days, pick up on a night shift, and then go back to day shift. I was supposed to work Saturday evening. I had to call out. I had to call out. That's how awful I felt. So I just want to say kudos to all the night shifters out there. More power to you guys. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to... This entire vlog has pretty much been ruined because... I did not get to do anything as planned. Never again. Y'all don't ever have to worry about me. Y'all ain't gotta worry about me. I commend the folks who consistently work night shift. I commend the folks who do rotating shifts. By rotating shifts, I mean the nurses who 
can work two days day shift and then be off for one day and go back for another three days night shift. I commend you guys. It's not for me. It's not for me. I'm not built for it. And the thing with me is that I am okay giving up. I am okay with saying I made a misstep. misstep. I am okay tapping out. I don't have an ego at all. That's one of the biggest mistakes I've made in a while. Was thinking that I can go in on night shift. Even though I did tell you guys that they changed their requirements. And they emailed me stating that I needed to meet my part-time requirements. I will be downgrading my status to PRN. If there is a unit that's willing to take me PRN. But to stay on part-time, it's just not possible. And I'm not giving up my job at the mental health facility. I'm not giving that up to go back into the hospital. I'm not doing that. Even though the money in the hospital is way more, I'm happier at the mental health residential facility. It's less wear and tear on my body. And I actually like the mental health aspect. I feel like I'm learning so much, especially about eating disorders. And I'm just going to stick with it. I'm wearing my glasses today because I can't bother with the contacts, the headache and all that stuff. Nope, can't do it. All right, y'all. Thank you all for watching this vlog. Sorry it wasn't given what it was supposed to give because your girl was down really bad. I will catch up with you guys in another video.